special thanks to Patreon supporter Dark Archer for making this tutorial possible. Hello ladies and gentlemen, Scare Tofu here bringing you another Minecraft Modern Warfare Vehicle Tutorial. In this tutorial we'll be going ahead and building the M1126 Infantry Carrier Vehicle. The M1126 Infantry Carrier Vehicle, known by the abbreviation ICV, is an armored personnel carrier and part of the Stryker family of vehicles, used by the United States Army and Royal Thai Army. The Infantry Carrier Vehicle provides protected transport and de during dismounted assault supporting fire for infantry squad. The Stryker is a full Time four wheel drive, selectively eight wheeled drive armored vehicle weighing approximately 19 tons, which carries an infantry squad with their equipment. On paved roads, the vehicles can attain speeds of 62 miles per hour or 100 kilometers per hour without a governor, and 30,000 miles per hour and 56 kilometers per hour with a governor. The basic uh, infantry carry vehicle provides armor protection for the two man crew and a squad of nine soldiers. So, yeah, the M1126 Striker, the base model here of the Striker family of vehicles, and basically the base platform for quite a wide variety of uh, different variants that um, use the uh, Striker and are part of the Striker family. Uh, this version, as I mentioned, is the basic version. So, this right here is the original version and the infantry carrier version. Um, all other uh, versions of the striker all fulfill different roles and uh, different needs that uh, this uh, vehicle would um, otherwise not be able to um, give. So yeah, uh, continuing on our striker family of vehicles, uh, we have this uh, basic version of striker finally. Uh, we did have a tutorial for this quite a while ago, but it is very outdated in with our new design of striker that we've been uh, implementing through uh, various tutorials and a lot of stuff. Um, it's uh, time to find, or finally time that we come and uh, redo this vehicle and make it look all good and stuff. So uh, happy to really uh, redo it and finally add the uh, base model to our ever-growing Striker family of vehicles. Before we go ahead and jump into taking a look at the vehicle, I do want to go ahead and give a special thanks to Patreon supporter Dark Archer for making this tutorial possible. If you guys are interested in supporting the channel where you already do, feel free to check my Patreon page. Link is always in my video descriptions where you can play this small amount of channel every month. And in doing so, earn a vehicle request to your choosing. It really helps support the work I do on my channel. And it's really greatly appreciated, so definitely feel free to check that out. Again, links are always in my video descriptions. With that though, um, let's go ahead and jump into taking a look at the vehicle. So, um, we have the base model here of the vehicle. A pretty standard if you built some of my other Striker variants before. We have obviously the chassis of the vehicle here. The whole, um, pretty much all the front same detailing. Uh, this here does have a mounted 50 cal machine gun for... Basically, the uh, gunner here to provide uh, a little bit of extra support for uh, the troops inside the vehicle. Uh, we have all the top details, radio antennas, all that stuff in the back here. It's uh, pretty much the same as our strikers, just with a uh, with a door and all that stuff for infantry to dismount. Uh, but really, that's about it for this uh, version of the striker. Pretty simple and kind of like the bare bones uh, version compared to some of the other crazier variants of it. Uh, but should be a fun build nonetheless, and a uh, perfect vehicle to include into your Striker um, convoys. Anyways, with that, let's go ahead and move into our first layer, layer number one. Going ahead and moving into our first layer, we're going ahead and starting with layer number one. For layer one to go ahead and get started with here, to place down two polished blackstone stairs, which will be back to back like so, followed by another set of two of polished blackstone stairs, back to be back to back from each other like that, going back. We're going to go ahead and place down a stubborn top slab, coming off these two stairs here. Then an iron trap door, a near stone brick top side. We're going to do the same thing for polished black stone stairs over here to this side of our two upside down stairs back to back in those two sets. We then want to go ahead and set, uh, skip two spaces back and we're going to place down a near set of two of polished black stone upside down stairs and a near two like so. We're going to go and do the same thing we did in the front, stone brick top steps to the sides here, iron trap doors, stone brick top steps, and again, polished black stone upside down stairs, second stair behind it, and same thing over here, those two stairs back to back. And once we have that all done, that right there is going to create our wheelbase, and with that, that is going to complete what we have for layer 1. Here's an overview of what it should look like from the top-down view. And with that, we'll be going ahead and moving into our next layer, layer number 2. Moving into our second layer, we have layer 2. For layer 2 to begin, we're going to place down two polished black stone stairs back-to-back -back on top of each of these sets of two upside-down or yeah, two upside -down stairs back-to-back. -back. This right here will just basically complete all of our wheels, so we're just going to go around to each set and do this all the way around. So just like that. Once we have that done, we're going to then place down an anvil on top of these iron trap doors there in the center, and then a stone brick wall to both sides of the anvil. And we're going to go and do that for all four axles. At this point, going toward the front, we're going to place down a row of three of green terracotta, followed by a second row of three with a zombie head on both ends, and then a row of three of dark oak with top subs across. 
We're going to place down an item frame on those two top slabs, and in those item frames, we're going to place down trip bar hooks, which we rotate to face downwards, like so, for some front toe hooks. After that, we're going to go ahead and place down a row of three of green terracotta across this space here, then two rows of three across here, and then on our last row of three, we're going to place down a dark oak with top slab to both ends. We're going to place down a row of three of green terracotta across the center here, and then a second row of three across here. And then we're going to place down one last row of three of green terracotta going back, a dark oak wood upside down stair to both sides, and a dark oak wood corner stair coming off those two stairs. We then want to go ahead and place down item frames on the sides here of these stairs, like so, and then trip our hooks in the item frames, which will be rotated face downwards, like so. In the center here, we're going to go ahead and place down an end rod, like that, and then a zombie head to both sides of the end rod, like so, to go ahead and form up the back there. And with that all complete, that right there is going to wrap up for the main structure there for this layer. I'm going to go ahead and grab some banner materials. I'm going to show you guys how to make these banner wheels, which kind of give the wheels a little bit more of a uh, detailed look. So uh, with that, I'm going to go ahead and grab those materials, and I'll see you guys back here shortly. All right, guys, so going ahead and moving into our banner wheels. To go ahead and get started with here, we're going to need a loom, two black banners, two green dye, and four black dye. We're going to go ahead and go into our loom, place our green banners, or sorry, our black banners in our green dye. We're going to select the line vertically on the left side for one banner. A green, and then we're going to go and set the line vertically on the right side for the second banner. Both these banners here will be placed back into the loom along with our black die. We'll do a line across the top and a line across the bottom like that to go ahead and form this banner. And then after that, we're going to do the same thing for this one. Line across the top horizontally and line across the bottom horizontally to create our second banner. Both these banners here will be placed on the side of these polished black stone stairs with the green portion of the banner facing toward each other. So again, this will just be done to each one of these stairs on both sides of the vehicle, just like that. And after we have that all done right there, that is going to wrap up what we have there for layer number two. And with that, let's move on to layer number three. All right, guys, moving into our next layer, we move into layer number three. For layer three, to go ahead and get started with here, and place down a row of three of green terracotta across right here, followed by a second row of three coming off that toward the front. We're going to place down mossy cobblestone wall to both sides of those blocks, as well as a green stained glass pane coming off those mossy cobblestone walls going forward. We then want to place down an item frame here, a white bed in the item frame, rotate on its side, and then a dark oak with sign on the side of the um, block. Now if you're on Java, you can place down a sign and item frame in the same block space. If you're on Bedrock or Pocket Edition, you're not able to. So if that's the case, just place down the item frame and disregard the sign. Um, otherwise though, we're going to place down two more dark good signs to this side. After that, we're going to place down a narrow row of three green terracotta across with a mossy cobblestone wall, again to both sides. After that, we're going to then place down two green terracotta blocks across this space, followed by a dark oak with up sound stair to both sides. And then in the center here, we're going to place down a green terracotta block. Stone brick wall to both sides, a row of three of green terracotta across, green terracotta block in the center, and again a stone brick wall to both sides. We're going to take dark oak with top slabs and place it down along the sides there. So one, two, three, and over here, same thing, one, two, three. After that, we want to go ahead and place down a row of three of green terracotta across, a dark oak with up sound stair to both sides, and then after that, we're going to place down a row of five of green terracotta across after that. We're going to place down a second row of, uh, or narrow row of three of dark green terracotta across, a dark oak with upside down stair to both sides. We then want to place down three rows of three of green terracotta going across, and we're just going to take our dark oak with top slabs and place down a row of three along the sides there, like so. We're going to go then place down a row of five of green terracotta across, an item frame to both ends, and then a trip bar hook in the item frames rotated to face downwards, like so, and same thing over here, just like that. After that, we want to go then place down a dark oak stair on top of those two upside down corner stairs, as well as an item frame coming off the front stair of the stairs, and then in those item frames, we're going to place down apples for the back brake lights. If you're on Java, we'll also place down a dark oak fence gate, come off this stair here, and open up toward it like that on both sides. After that, we want to go then place down a green stained glass pane in the center here, followed by a granite wall to both sides, like so. And after we have that all complete, that is going to basically wrap up what we have there for layer number three. And uh, here's a look at, uh, look at it from up above so far. And with that, we'll be going ahead and moving into our next layer, layer number four. Moving into our next layer, we have layer four. For layer four to get started with, you're going to place down an anvil on top of this block, fall by a zombie head coming off it going forward. We're going to place down a dark slab over here on the right side. And over to the left side, we're going to place down a spruce wood slab, like so. Then taking dark oak wood stairs, we're going to place down a row of three of dark oak wood stairs across, fall by a dark oak wood corner stair to both sides, like that. We then also want to place down a dark oak wood fence gate coming off these two mossy cobblestone walls and opened up toward the outsides like so. Coming off those uh, fence gates we're going to place down item frames and then in those item frames we're going to place down snowballs like so. 
If you're on a Bedrock or Pocket Edition, I'd recommend going to the side here and placing down another fence gate like that out to the side. And then a zombie head on top of this fence gate at a slight angle. So like that. If you're on Java, we can go ahead and use a different technique. We'll go ahead and build a block that's basically a space from this uh, this fence gate, so we have a space of one between it, and we're going to place down a lever. We'll go ahead and grab ourselves a debug stick, and by right or by changing the facing by left clicking with our debug stick here, using this command slash give at p minecraft colon debug underscore stick, we'll be able to go ahead and have this stick here. We'll go ahead and left click it until we get selected facing. We'll right click until it basically comes or rotates so it connects up to this fence gate like that. And then on top of that we'll just go ahead and place down a skeleton squad at a slight angle like we did on the air side. So you have two options. Uh, one if you're on Bedrock or Pocket Edition and then one if you're on Java. So two options there for doing those side mirrors. After that though we're going to go ahead and place down a row of three of green terracotta across this space here. Then a mossy cobblestone wall. Two bow fence. We then want to go ahead and grab ourselves a item frame. Place it down the side here of these walls. Then in that item frame, we're going to place down a tripwire hook, like so. We're going to then place down a row of five of green terracotta across, followed by a second row of five, two rows of three of green terracotta, and then a row of, or a row of three of, sorry, row two of green shulker boxes on their sides, with dark oak buttons on the side there of those shulker boxes, like so. After that, we're going to take our green terracotta, and we're just going to go and do a row of five across, so like that all the way across that section there. And this section here, we're going to do a row of four. One, two, three, four. On the left side here, we are going to... Actually, my bad. It's going to be a row of five. So my bad. Just go all the way across. We're going to then place down a uh, third row of five. Or sorry, that would actually be a four. That would be a third row. Then we have a fourth row, a fifth row, and a sixth row. So six rows of five going back. On the left side here, we're going to place down one, two. Skip a space. Three. Skip a space. Four levers along the side there. On the inner side here, we're just going to go ahead and place down a lever here, and then skip a space and a lever right there. We'll then take item frames, and we'll place down two item frames on the side here, and in those item frames we can go ahead and place down some iron tools for a little bit of tool we don't attach on the side of the vehicle. So just like that. Then on the back here, uh, we want to go ahead and place down a mossy cobblestone wall on top of those stairs, granite walls next to them, and then a green stained glass pane there in the center. We're also going to go ahead and grab our shulker boxes, and we're going to place down shulker boxes on top of those fence gates. And we're going to then take dark liquid signs and wrap them around the sides here of the shulker boxes, like so. And once we have that done there, uh, we will also simply just go ahead and place down zombie heads on top of those shulker boxes like that. And with that all complete, uh, that right there will conclude what we have for layer number four. And with that, let's go ahead and move into layer number five. All right, guys, moving into our next layer, we have layer number five. For layer five to get started with here, we'll place down a zombie head on top of this green terracotta block here and a dark oak wood slab to the left side of it, so this side here. We're going to go ahead and place down an item frame, and a black bed in the item frame rotated sideways. If you're on Java, we'll also place a dark oak wood sign on the side of that slab like so. After that, we want to go ahead and also place down a zombie head at a slight angle on top of that mossy cobblestone wall there. Going to the other side, we're going to place down a daylight detector, and then a zombie head right there on top of that wall. We're going to go then place down a piston that goes back from this slab. We're going to leave that piston as is for right now. If you are on uh, Bedrock or Pocket Edition, you can also use the end frame. So let me go ahead and see here. Find the end portal uh, frame. So you can also use this in place of that piston. So uh, again, you have a couple options there. But if we're on Java, uh, we're going to use the piston. Any other version, you can use the end portal frame. Behind this uh, piston, we're going to place down two anvils like so. And there's zombie head in this block space, like so. Also, again, if you're on Java, we'll place down a uh, item frame on the side of this anvil. And then in that item frame, we're going to place down a green stained glass paint. And that's only going to be on Java because you have the item frame and zombie head in the same block space. Uh, once we get to this point, we're going to place down a dark oak wood slab here next to the piston, as well as a dark oak wood stair right here. We then want to go ahead and grab ourselves a lectern. We're going to place down a lectern here, and then a dark oak wood stair next to it. After that, we're going to place down a polished blackstone full block. A polished blackstone stair and then a polished blackstone uh, set of two walls like that and you want to make sure that your dark liquid stair is facing that direction like so after we have uh, that all done we can go ahead and take our debug stick and right click the piston and it'll turn the piston into a design that looks like this um, again you can use the end portal frame too as an alternative at this point here we're going to place down a dark liquid corner stair on top of this or a stair right here like this facing that direction and then one two three and four stairs back from it 
a dark liquid sign on the side of the right side stair and just the right side only. We're going to go then take our green terracotta, place down a row of three across, followed by a mossy cobblestone wall on both ends. And on both sides here, we're going to go back one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven mossy cobblestone walls. Same thing over here, seven walls back. The inside here, uh, we'll go ahead and just fill in with green terracotta. So this will just be filled in pretty much uh, all the way to this point here. So we have basically six rows of three filled in. And then this second to last row here, we're placed on a green shulker box in the middle and then a green terracotta block to both sides. And then one last row of three, a green terracotta across. We then want to place down a dark oak button, come off those two blocks there. And then to the sides, we'll go ahead and grab ourselves an item frame. We'll place down an item frame. Like that to both sides on those walls, and then a tripwire hook in the item frame rotated facing downwards. Same thing over here as well, like that. After that's done, we want to go ahead and then grab our green stained glass panes, and we're going to place down a row of one, two, three, four, five, six green stained glass panes here. And over on the other side, uh, we're going to place down a row of seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, all the way along the side there, like so. And with that all done, uh, that right there will almost wrap up this layer. One thing also we're going to do is we're going to place down a dark oak fence post on top of this corner stair here in the front, a end rod on top of that, and then a zombie head on top of that. And once we have that done, also on the side of this mossy cobblestone wall here, we're going to place down an item frame, followed by a black bed. That'll be in the item frame on its side, and then a dark oak sign on the side of that wall if you're on uh, Java. And with that all complete though, that is going to wrap up what we have here for uh, layer number 5. And with that, we'll be going ahead and moving into our final layers. Layers 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. So with that, let's go ahead and move into our final layers, layers 6 for 10. Alright guys, so moving into our final layers, we have layers 6 for 10. For these layers to go ahead and get started with, we're going to begin with by placing down a dark oak fence post on top of this wall right here. And then we're going to go ahead and then place down an end rod on top of it, and then a zombie head on the very top there like so. We also want to take dark oak trapdoors. We're going to place down two dark oak trapdoors on top of those two anvils there. With that complete, we're going to go ahead and then go back from the fence post to dark oak trapdoors. And then we're going to go ahead and place down two spruce wood trapdoors next to those. Followed by a dark oak wood stair. Like so. An air stair like this. And then an air stair like that. To go ahead and kind of create this circular shape there. We're going to place down a spruce wood slab in the center. Then a zombie head in this uh, corner space there between those stairs. And then we're going to place down a mossy cobblestone wall on top of this block here. Coming off the mossy cobblestone wall, we're going to place down an item frame. In that item frame, we're going to place down a black bed, like so. And then a dark oak wood sign on the side of that, um, on the side of that if we uh, can do it. We're going to then place down a dark oak wood fence gate. Come off the sides here of this, uh, or the one side here of this wall. And we want to go and then place down a wither skeleton skull. Come off this fence gate and a wither skeleton skull. Come off that stair there. After that, going ahead and going back from this, we're going to place down a dark liquid slab here in the center. Grab a daylight detector. We're going to place down a daylight detector to both sides. Make sure you keep that trap door closed if it does open. In the center here, going back from the daylight detector, we're going to place down a zombie head. Then we're going to place down dark liquid signs on the sides here of these slabs and trap doors and daylight detectors. After that, we're going to place down a dark liquid fence post on top of this second wall back over here on the right side. And going up from it, we're going to place down a row of five iron bars. So one, two, three, four, and five, up like so. And then our next uh, fence post is going to be on top of this mossy cobblestone wall. And same thing, five iron bars going up. Five, and then one more over here on this corner wall as well. Again, the same thing, five iron bars up. Now once we get to this point, we're going to go and then take our dark liquid buttons. We're going to place down a row of three across this section here. Followed by a spruce wood trapdoor to both sides of that shulker box. Then a item frame, which will go in the center. Like so, and then a green terracotta block in the item frame, just like that. And once we have that all done, we're going to go ahead and start working our way into the turret. So for the turret up here, we're going to place down an anvil on top of this wall here. A dark liquid fence key coming off the back of the anvil like so. And then a polished blackstone upside down stair coming off it going forward. We're going to go ahead and then place down a end rod and then a chain coming off that end rod like that going toward the front. Taking a green shulker box, we're going to place down a green shulker box on the left side of the stair. On top of that, we'll place down a powered rail and we want to make sure that the rail is facing toward the stair. Then a redstone repeater on top of this stair with a notch spread apart like so and then a zombie head on the side of this stair as well. And after we have that all done right there, that is going to basically complete what we have there for uh, layer, layers 5 through 10 and, or sorry, layer 6 through 10 
And with that, that will conclude my tutorial here for the M1126 ICV Striker. Hope you guys do enjoy this tutorial. Actually, one quick thing, almost, I almost completely forgot, two dark liquid buttons on the front there as well. A uh, little minor detail, but uh, just uh, almost forget, completely forgot them. Anyways, though, that right there is going to conclude this uh, tutorial. Hope you guys do enjoy it. If you guys uh, do up using this as I do, I you guys give me proper credit for this. Be linked from a sound of the build, link to my channel, or this video if this does paint social media sites. As long as you guys give me proper credit for your free zero project you guys are working on over on Enjoy the Build, have fun and all that fun stuff. If, uh, or with that, uh, if you guys are interested, feel free to check out my Patreon page. Link is always in my video description. So, you can put a small amount to the channel every month and in doing so, or a video request you're choosing. And uh, all that, again, a big special thanks to Patreon support Dark Archer for making this tutorial possible. With that, though, thank you guys again so much for watching. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. This has been your 204, and I'll see you guys next time.